Hello and welcome, EMS Nation, to our second podcast episode, Push Dose Pressers, working through the manual heuristics of creating a push dose presser, typically via epinephrine, and transitioning that to a dirty epinephrine infusion for your pre-hospital patient in shock who may or may not require an advanced airway. Today, joining us, we have Dr. Jim Tannis, who has been a paramedic for over 18 years and is currently an intern in emergency medicine working towards his attending ship. We work through the manual heuristics of creating push dose pressors and administering push dose pressors to optimize the hemodynamics of our septic patient. In this ALS video series, our aim is to bring you halo cases, high acuity, low occurrence cases, which you may or may not have significant experience dealing with. So sit back and enjoy as we present our case and Dr. Tanis leads you through the manual heuristics of creating and administering push dose epinephrine. Hello and welcome to our podcast simulation episode. What we would like to start off episode number one is by running a common scenario You've been called as an ALS unit to respond to a nursing home where you've done your initial assessment of a patient who's a 76-year-old with history of asthma as well as hypertension and hyperlipidemia that has been bed-bound and has recently developed a cough, fever, and abnormal vital signs. You have arrived, connected the patient to your monitor, and obtained an initial set of vital signs. You've placed an IV uh, and normal saline has uh, been started and you've also placed a nasal cannula noting your patient is hypoxic and turned it all the way up to 15 liters per minute because of altered uh, cognition and concomitant hypoxia. As we can see, our initial set of vital signs are a heart rate of 120, a blood pressure of 76 over 49, an initial O2 saturation of 72%. What we'd like to do now is go through how to optimally perform the next steps of the resuscitation, including how to improve or optimize your hemodynamics in preparation for rapid sequence intubation by using push dose pressors. So stand by, and it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Tannis, uh, who's going to take it from here. So obviously this patient is in trouble, you know, patient's hypoxic, hypotensive, tachycardic, meets many of our SERS criteria, and when we identify our septic shock patients, it's important to start some empiric things, even pre hospital it makes a difference. We can start with IV fluid boluses, running our fluid wide open, starting a second IV, um, getting our initial load, evidence-based medicine is telling us now to uh, empirically load our patients with upwards of 30 cc's per kilogram of uh, crystal load. Now, this patient needs airway intervention and needs uh, further uh, management, and we just don't have the time to put the 30 cc's per kilogram fluid bolus in. We can start that, start optimizing our patients and work in that direction, but our push dose pressures have become mainstream, and I think a lot of people talk about it, and um, to actually see the preparation of that syringe go in, it can be done very quickly, and uh, is our next tool in our, in our toolbox here once our fluid administration is, uh, is going on and we're supplementing our patient's respiratory uh, and pulmonary system. So once we have our fluid going in and we've decided that we need to optimize this patient for advanced airway, um, one of the prime indicators of a patient not surviving a rapid sequence induction is their shock index and we need to optimize our patient to get to the, the best possible place before we give them sedatives and paralytics and positive pressure ventilation because that's going to further drop and uh, diminish their, their perfusion and their blood pressure. So one of the things we use, as I mentioned before, is our shock index. Now our shock index can be calculated with um, you know, a formula, but it, grossly, if you know your heart rate is higher than your systolic blood pressure, you have a positive number. And a shock index over that 0.7 uh, is considered to be significant, one of the strongest indicators of peri-intubation uh, hypotension. So we know we're already in trouble with this patient, and we can identify that you know, by our hypotension or tachycardia. So to help with that is our crystal load loading, and also we can give some push dose pressors to try and bring that blood pressure up and try and reduce that shock index. 
All right, so some of the tools we have in pretty much every ALS unit across you know, the world is uh, our cardiac concentration of epinephrine. This is epinephrine 1 to 10,000. Uh, everybody knows and loves this. It's commonly used throughout uh, resuscitations. But uh, this particular is 1 milligram of epinephrine in 10 cc's of saline. So the push dose epinephrine really works in a concentration of 1 to 100,000 epinephrine. So it's a simple dilution to uh, get us to where we need to be. Now there's a couple different ways we can do this. We can start off with our vial. This is 10 milliliters of volume and one milligram of drug. So we can do is take a syringe. Okay, and from here, taking the caps off and just using the glass vial, if you take a standard 18 gauge needle and stick it within the, the stopper here, you can get to the medication and you want to draw up one milliliter. So this is one milliliter of the epinephrine one to 10,000 drawn directly out of the glass syringe. Now with that, we can QS it or bring it up to 10 milliliters. So this is 100 cc's of normal saline. And we can take an additional nine milliliters bring us all the way up to 10. All right, so this concentration here now, protecting my sharps here, is epinephrine 1 to 100,000. What that means is every cc or every milliliter of this concentration is 10 micrograms of epinephrine. Now if we run an epinephrine drip on our patients that are hypotense and we're going to start a conventional presser, our dose is anywhere between 2 and 20 micrograms per minute. So if we're giving 10 micrograms every minute, it's very similar to starting an epinephrine infusion. So with this, we can optimize our patient's blood pressure by giving our initial fluid uh, boluses and resuscitation. And then if we're pushed to act, and we need to bring their blood pressure up to tolerate or to withstand a rapid sequence induction, um, we can give 10 micrograms every 30 to 60 seconds to try and press them immediately without going through the rigmarole of setting up an epinephrine infusion. Pre-hospitally, we normally don't have these things pre-mixed and we need to make this. This is very quickly done and easily to set up. So just to review, one cc out of the glass, one to 10,000 epinephrine into an empty 10 cc syringe, 100 milliliter bag of saline. You take nine cc's to add it to this. So you get a total volume of 10 milliliters. So you end up with epinephrine concentration of one to 100,000 epinephrine, which is 10 micrograms of epinephrine per cc. Now step further to this, so this is ready to go and you can use this during your induction. You can take another Bristol jet and actually set this up and inject a new one milligram into this bag. So remember we took nine cc's out of here. So there is um, 91 mLs of saline in here, right? So let's add one milligram to this entire volume back into this bag. So this now is epinephrine one to 100,000 in 100, millil 100 milliliters of it. So these two medications have the identical amount of epinephrine in them. So you can go back in this bag and refill your syringe when you use up the epi 1 to 100,000. Both of these are 1 to 100,000. So you made this by putting 1 milliliter of epi 1 to 10,000 in here and bringing it up to a total of 10 cc's to make epinephrine 1 to 100,000. And here, the same amount of medication is in here. You took a full 1 to 10,000, 10 cc's, and added it to a 100 cc bag. And now this is epi 1 to 100,000. This is 10 micrograms per cc. So this can refill your syringe for your push dose, and this also can be your epinephrine infusion when you add to uh, IV tube into this and run it at 1 to 2 cc's an hour. And this too can be your epinephrine infusion. So these medications can work together push doses until you get to where you need to be and you can maintain it with a simple epinephrine infusion. 
So we're back to our patient. So our initial resuscitation, our fluid resuscitation, our high flow nasal cannula, trying to optimize our patient, our, our septic patient that we know uh, that we're in trouble with, we know, identified early on having to be tachycardic, hypotensive, tachypnic, and uh, with a reasonable idea that we have some type of bad pneumonia going on with coarse uh, lung sounds and, and signs of dyspnea and gross uh, increase in market breathing. So we have our septic patient. We've identified them early. We've started our fluid resuscitation. And after seven, you know, a liter or so or two liters of fluid, we really haven't made much difference in our, our, our getting better to getting back to a normalizing a shock index or lowering our shock index. Our heart rate has come down a little bit. Our, our blood pressure has come up a little bit, but we're still not there. We're still at a, a, a high risk of this patient becoming um, grossly high, hypotensive and not surviving uh, a rapid sequence induction. So for, with that, we're going to turn back to our concentrations of um, epinephrine that we just mixed. So we have our epi 1 to 100,000. Now this looks like any other syringe laying around in the back of the ambulance or in the, or in the resuscitation bay. So an important thing is you just want to tag this so we know it is um, you know, something special, not just regular saline flush or whatnot. So even just a, a piece of tape and just writing with a marker or something, epi, one to 100K, and you know right off the bat, you got, you know what you got. And you take your Sharpie and write right on your IV bag. Epi, one to 100K. And pretty much everybody should know what this is at this point. So now our patient, we have our fluid running in, and we're working on optimizing blood pressure our first dose is going to be anywhere between 10 micrograms every 30 to 60 seconds. So we can push this into our patient. Okay, so we have our first 10 micrograms and see our effect. And then we can wait 30 to 60 seconds and give another dose. And another dose. And another dose. And we try and bring that blood pressure up, pressing our patient. Um, as we go. So as we push the push those presser in, the vasoconstrict them, we try and increase the blood flow. We, I mean, we try and increase our, our, our perfusion or our patient, squeeze our vascular down, increase our systemic blood pressure with a quick and easy push dose presser. So as that's working, and we're waiting for a blood pressure to come back in here, we can start setting up our infusion. So we can take our pump tubing at this point, or even let it run on a gravity drip. So in my shop, we use the IVAC tubing and the IVAC triple. Um, three stage pumps where we can set this in and run three different drips in one machine so we have these cartridges that can go into our IV pump. So we set this up on, on, on our IV pole, we plug this into our pump, and we start our um, epinephrine at one to two cc's an hour is going to give us, uh, or one to two cc's a minute is going to give us 10 to 20 micrograms a minute, which is our epinephrine dose for our vasopressor. So we can give our push doses and we can also run our infusion in. We run out of push dose, we can go right in this IV bag and refill our syringe because remember, these are identical concentrations. Epinephrine 1 to 100,000 in a bag or in a syringe, it's still epinephrine 10 micrograms per cc. So we want to try and optimize our patient, reduce our heart rate, increase our systolic blood pressure, and avoid that high risk intubation of our shock index being greater than 1. So let's recycle our blood pressure and see if. So our heart rate's come down, our blood pressure's come up, we're still hovering around that danger zone above 0 0.7 on our shock index, but our systolic blood pressure is closely approaching or approximating our heart rate. And we can continue to give our push dose, our fluid resuscitation, and uh, move on to you know, our next step. We're oxygenating our patient with a high flow nasal cannula. Um, they're still hypoxic. So in our pneumonia patient, we have a Increased work of breathing, a hypoxic patient probably has shunt physiology and is going to need PEEP. So if you have a patient who's refractory to high concentration of oxygen on their pulse ox, we want to start adding in PEEP. And to do that, 
is we can add in non-invasive to try and optimize our patient and uh, almost like a delayed sequence intubation and we can cover that next week. But we can add CPAP over our high flow nasal cannula to increase our PEEP, to try and recruit our alveoli, to decrease our shrunk fraction and oxygenate our patients better. So take our high risk patients, perfuse them better with a better blood pressure, optimize their pulse ox as high as possible before we attempt to intubate and, and uh, uh, rapid sequence induce our patients with medications that are inherently going to drop their blood pressure. EMS Nation, thank you so much for joining us on our second podcast episode on the creation and administration of push-dose epinephrine. We hope that that was value-added content for everyone out there that was watching and listening. We'd like to remind the entire crew of EMS Nation that this podcast is an experiment. We'd love your feedback on the content you'd ideally like to see on this episode's as well as future directions for the podcast. We hope to continue bringing you an ALS Advanced Life Support video series, and we'd also like to bring you a BLS Basic Life Support video series and simulation. Please ping us on Twitter and Facebook, where we release a significant amount of additional content not yet covered in the podcast series. On the next episode... We'll hope you'll join us as we delve into an EMS journal club where on a weekly basis we review all the most pertinent articles and literature published on pre-hospital medicine. So that will certainly be a special treat. Until then, this is Faison Arshad wishing everyone a safe tour.